Hi, my name is Bondi Bites, and today we are going to finish our Amazon Echo skill. And so last time we created our sample utterances, which were, you know, what's the weather, tell me about this, blah, 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 what we say to our Echo, mapped them to intents. And so here we had the reindeer intent, we had all of our intents in our intent schema. If you are unfamiliar with this, go ahead and check out the other video down below. But we are going to do the third part of our one, two, three part series of how to create an Alexa skill. And so we had part one, which was create the utterances, part two, map them to intents, and now part three, based on the fact that we called this intent, what does the echo send as a response? And so most of this code is gonna be in Sublime today. If you do not have Sublime, the link is down below, but basically you can use whatever text editor you want. And we are gonna save this in a folder called source, and then we'll go ahead and call this our index.js. And so I have a file, it's gonna be linked down below, but basically it has kind of some starter code that's gonna get us started with how to create an Amazon Echo. There's gonna be a lot of code in this, but we will go through it slowly. I promise it'll be great. And we're not even gonna look at it at first. The first thing we're gonna do is create the data that our application is going to use. And so last time we looked at our thing, it was like, hello, reindeer, okay. And this, these were the personalities of our reindeer. So the user is gonna say, you know, tell me about Dasher, tell me about Prancer, Blitzen, you know, whatever. And we're gonna go ahead and return that personality trait and skill. So we're gonna create this really big variable that holds all that data. And so we're gonna have this variable called reindeers, and that's gonna hold all of this and we are gonna just copy all the information from this website into our code. And so this is gonna take a little while. So we're gonna have the personality trait as a thing we can access. And we're gonna have loves to go fast, cause that's what it says on the website. The website's gonna be linked down below. And then we'll have our skill be sewing for Dasher. And we're just gonna do this for every single reindeer. So we'll just speed this up. And so there we go, we have all of our reindeer in here. We just took the information from that website and put it into our own code the way we'd like. And so based on what the user you know, asks for, whether it's about Prancer or Vixen or Cupid, Comet, whatever, we'll be able to access this value inside of the object and then be able to pull out the facts that we want. And so let's go ahead and scroll down, check out this code. And a lot of this we do not even need to worry about. Like the exports handler, this is just what it does. It takes the event in context and basically it checks if the request or the intent was at a launch request, then we'll go ahead and start the app, you know, start the skill. Otherwise, if it's an intent, then we'll go ahead and call this function, which will then check what type of intent it is. And then if it, you know, we asked it for the session to be ended, then we'll go ahead and end the session with this skill. So this is kind of a big overview that you don't really touch. And then down here, these are the ones we really like to talk about down here. This is where we're gonna do a lot of our coding. And so for on launch, basically what this means is what is the Alexa gonna say? What is the Echo gonna say when we start the skill? And so what we're gonna do is actually have a get welcome response and we are gonna give it the callback function. And so this function is already created a little bit down here. And so this is like what we're gonna say when we open the skill. And so what are we gonna do? Well, we have multiple parts to this. One thing is what is the echo going to say? Well, we're gonna create a var that's gonna called speech output and we are gonna say welcome to reindeer facts. I can tell you about all the famous reindeer. And then we're gonna go ahead and list them here. And so it is Dasher, Dancer, Prancer, Vixen, da -da -da, Comet, Cupid, Blitzen, Rudolph, it off and olive. So those are all of the reindeer. And then we'll say, I can only 
give facts about one at a time so the user doesn't ask for like multiple reindeer. This is going to be a simple tutorial. We don't want to deal with multiple reindeer right now. So I can only give facts about one at a time. Which are you, which reindeer are you interested in? And so we have all the famous reindeer, they're listed. Which one are you interested in? And then we'll go ahead and do the reprompt text, which is like if the user doesn't respond, what do we say to prompt the user again to, hey, you need to respond. And so reprompt, if I can spell it there, we'll say, which reindeer are you interested in? You can find out about, and then we'll go ahead and copy the reindeer here, paste them in there. Those are the ones you can find out about. Okay, we have our speech output. We have our reprompt if the user does not respond. We'll also have something that's a header. And so this may be, if you do not own an Amazon Echo, this may be something that's kind of new. There's an app in, that you can download on Android, iOS, whatever. And inside of the app, you'll have cards that show up. But basically these cards have a header and they have text. And so we're gonna have the header be reindeer facts. And so this is not something that the Echo is going to say, but it's kind of a little pop-up card that has more information about what the skill is doing um, in these cards that are inside of the Alexa app. And so we'll have this header that's just gonna be reindeer facts, and then we'll have a should end session, which is gonna be false, saying, should we end this skill session? Well, we shouldn't because we just started the session. And then we're gonna set the session attributes. And so we'll have session attributes. And it's just gonna be an object that holds some attributes that we might wanna access later on. And so we're gonna have the speech output equal speech output. And we're gonna have the reprompt, reprompt text equal our reprompt that we had there. And then the last thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna use our callback function. And we're gonna send it back with the session attributes, as well as with the build speechlet response with the header, the speech output, the reprompt, re prompt, and the should end session. And so what is this all doing? Well, we basically created a bunch of variables and then we called the callback function with some stuff in here. And so the session attributes, we created those. These are things that we will want to know about throughout the session. And so say we had multiple intents where we wanted to keep the reindeer that they asked about, you know, we wanted to keep that in memory. Well, we could put it inside of the session attributes. That's not something we're gonna be messing a lot with in this tutorial. We're more just, you know, figuring out how do you create this skill. And so this build speechlet response function, this is actually given to us inside of the sample code here. Basically, these create kind of the formatting for how we send a response that the Alexa should say, you know, to the user. And so they're kind of these big JSON objects with a bunch of stuff, and we don't wanna to have to write all of this every single time we wanna return a response. And so we go ahead and create this function. These are basically in a lot of the Amazon GitHub repositories online. So we go ahead and just snatch those away. But basically we have three types of things we can respond with. One, which is we give it a title, which is the title for the card, the output, what the Alexa is going to say, the reprompt text, you know, what are they gonna say when we don't respond and then if we should end the session. And so in this case, we have our output speech is going to be that. And then the content of the card is automatically placed as the output speech. But you could change that by creating another function and having this be a variable and this be parameter, all that good stuff. Another thing that we can respond with is just, you know, send the response without the card, but still with the reprompt. And so we'll have the speech output, the reprompt text, and if we should end the session. And usually that will be false unless we actually want to end the session, which would be true. And then we also have the option to build a response, which is just, you know, just having the output text, but without a reprompt. And so going ahead back out here, basically all of our functions are going to end with this type of line of code where we call the callback function, we give it the session attributes, and then we build some kind of response based on the variables that we created here. 
And so inside of our get on launch, we call the get welcome response. And because it calls the callback inside of this function, we're done. That's all we have to do for when it launches. Going back up here, we just did the code for on launch, but now we have to do the code for on intent. And so basically, if we have an intent request that is not starting or ending the skill, this is the method that's going to be called. And so here, we already have some code inside of here. We get the intent from the intent request, and then we get the intent's name. So here, we're just gonna write this big ginormous if statement that's basically gonna say, if it's a specific intent, do this block of code. And so we're gonna have if intent name equals reindeer intent, then we're gonna go ahead and do some code. Otherwise, if intent name equals amazon.yes intent, then we're gonna go ahead and do some other code. Else, if, you get the idea. So we'll go ahead and fill all this out. And then else throw invalid intent, which is basically saying if we don't call one of these intents, then something's gone wrong and we need to throw an error. And so the majority of this tutorial is gonna be filling out what do we do when it, each of these intents are called. And so we'll start off with the reindeer intent and we're gonna create this function called handle rain deer response. And we're going to give it the intent, the session, and the callback. And so notice it's the intent and not the intent request here. And so we'll go ahead and copy that. And we'll go down here, we'll put it right under our get welcome response. So we'll have function with this, and we'll write the code for this function. And so to start this off, we are gonna go ahead and get the specific reindeer that we asked for, which is gonna be in the intent dot slots dot the reindeer so the reindeer slot dot value, and then we're gonna convert that value to lowercase. And so this like line of code will go ahead and get dasher, dancer, prancer, whatever the user. And so we'll say if the reindeer is not inside of the variable that we created up there, so it's not one of the famous reindeer, then we're gonna have a certain response. And if it is in there, then we're gonna have a different response. And so inside of this, we'll go var speech output equals that reindeer isn't very famous because we don't know about it and don't have facts about it. So try asking about another like, and then we'll go ahead and copy all of our reindeer from up here. You could create a function that returns all these reindeer, but lazy. Okay, so we'll go here, and now we're gonna do the reprompt text as well. Reprompt text, try asking about another reindeer. We'll have the header, which is gonna be not famous enough because we don't know about it. And then that's it. And then we're gonna do the same thing, but for the else clause here, we're gonna have our var speech output, which is gonna equal some text. But first we have to go ahead and grab the skill and the trait. So we're gonna have var personality trait equals whatever our reindeer when we go and grab this object. The reindeers at reindeer, which will be, you know, dash or prance or whatever, we'll go ahead and grab the personality trait. And then we'll also have the var skill, which is gonna be the reindeers, the reindeer with the skill. And then our speech output is actually gonna be something called capitalize first, which is a function we're gonna create later. So if we capitalize the first letter of the reindeer, you know, whatever it's dash or prance or whatever, that's what it's going to return. We'll have a little space and we'll go ahead and put in the personality trait and then we'll have a little and here and then put in the skill. And then add a period. And then we'll say, do you want to hear about more reindeer? Which again, the user is gonna say, yeah, yes, no, whatever. And then the reprompt text for this is going to be, do you want to hear about more reindeer? If the user doesn't respond, and then our header is gonna be the capitalized first reindeer. So it's gonna take whatever value is inside of this variable, and it's gonna return whatever it is, but capitalizing the first letter. And so we'll go ahead and go down here and create that function 
called capitalized. First, it's going to take a string called s, and it's just going to return s.char at 0 dot two uppercase so capitalizing that first character and then s dot slice one to get the rest of it and we'll to return that so just a little easy function that i stole off of stack overflow thank you very much and after this else statement once we have all of our variables set we are going to go ahead and call the callback function and so we'll have callback session dot attributes so again, we're not really setting these attributes, we're just keeping the same ones for the whole time, but you could if you wanted to build speech let response because we're gonna have a card and a header and all that good stuff. We'll have the header, we'll have the speech output, we'll have the reprompt text, reprompt text, and then we're gonna also have the should in session and we'll have to create this variable should in session and it's gonna be false because we're going to keep going until we finally get that answer no or stop or cancel. And so now is on to the easier code, so it's just going to be super simple. We are going to add handle yes response. It's going to have the intent, the session, the callback, all this good stuff, so we have access to everything. And we'll have the function down here, function with this. We're gonna have our var speech output, which is gonna be great. The fact, you know, it's great that you heard about the first reindeer. So we'll say, which reindeer do they wanna hear about? And then again, copying this great thing so we don't have to remember these reindeer right now. And we'll say, you can find out about dash da da da. Okay. And then we'll have the reprompt text to be the same as the speech output. So we'll have reprompt text equals the same as that speech output here. And we're not going to have a card, so we'll just have the should in session. That's going to be false. And then we'll go ahead and do the callback session.attributes. All is good. Build speech let response without card because we're not having that header or you know any of that good stuff. And so we'll just have the speech output the reprompt text, and then the should in session here. So that's handle yes. Now we're just gonna have the handle no response. It's gonna have the intent of the session. You get a pattern here. You basically do this for every single intent, which is why it's gonna take a little while, but not too long. So we'll have this. And then inside of here, we're actually gonna do something a little bit different than the others. We're gonna have handle finish session request. And so the reason that the no response would be called is if we said, you know, do you want to hear about more reindeer? You said no. We already did the yes response. Now we're doing the no response. And it's going to take again the session, you know, intent, the callback, all that good stuff. And this function actually already exists. It's part of our template. And all it does is, you know, do the callback with the session's attributes. It builds the response without the card and it says goodbye. And we'll add thank you for using reindeer facts. We're not going to have, you know, nothing for the reprompt and it's going to be a true the fact that we do want to end the session. And we're actually going to use something very similar to this for our stop and cancel intents. And so we have that no intent that is in there and then we'll have handle get help request. It's going to take the intent, the session, and the callback. So this is what we're going to say, like if the user doesn't know how to use our skill. We're going to go ahead and do all this good stuff. We'll close that. And inside of here, we're going to do speech output. Again, have this variable. I can tell you facts about all the famous reindeer. And again, we're going to have all these great reindeer. We'll copy it from here. Da -da -da. Going back down. We were at the get help request. Got all these fancy reindeer, and then we'll do a plus which, da -da -da, which reindeer are you interested in? Remember, I can only get facts about one reindeer at a time. And then we're going to have our var reprompt text. It's just going to be the same as the speech output. 
And since they just asked for help, we're going to assume that they do not want to end the session. And so we're going to have that false. And then we're just going to do this callback function with the session.attributes build speech slate response without card because we didn't create a header. And so we'll have the speech output, our reprompt text as always, and then our should end session, which is going to be false. And so we had our get help which was here, and now we just have the stop and cancel, and these are gonna be super easy, because all we do is handle finish session request, because if we say stop or cancel, we just wanna end the session, and we're giving it the intent, the session, the callback, and then we're also going to do that for our cancel intent. So you might be wondering, like, why didn't we call the handle finish session intent, you know, the request, whatever this thing is, with the no, because that's really all we do. If we go to the handle no response, down here, all we do is call this. The reason we don't immediately call that is because like there might be a time in the future where we don't want to call the finish session requests. No could mean something else in the context of this skill. And so we allow that you know possibility by adding this other function. It makes it easier to edit later if we want to change what no means for this context. So now we'll go ahead and copy this and paste it into js.do. And this is what I do to figure out syntax because it's sometimes hard when you're typing really fast. And so you'll go here, you'll run the code. We have an unexpected token on line 38. Ah, right here, gotta delete that over here with Olive. So let's go with Olive, go ahead and delete that guy. We'll delete it here, run the code again, 148. Check out what that syntax error is. And we forgot the comma there. So we'll go to 148 down here. This is debugging. Add that comma there. And then we'll run the code again. Unexpected equal. So we gotta have these guys there. I'm gonna assume that's what it was and that's what it was. So we'll have these here instead. 174. Ah, and we have this error over here. Why did we add this thing? And so we'll go ahead and delete that from our, do you want to hear about more reindeer? Delete that guy. So crazy. And then we'll go ahead and run the code again. It says exports not defined, which is totally an okay thing because that's something that Amazon deals with and we don't have to touch. And so our syntax errors seem good. So we'll go ahead, go into our reindeer facts here and compress our index.js. And we're going to use this index.js in a minute. And so the next thing that we're going to do is go to the console.log or the console for AWS. And so if you just Google AWS Amazon, it's going to pop up for us. We'll go ahead and go to Amazon Web Services. Again, you're going to log into your Amazon account. You'll go to sign into console and it already signed me in. We are going to click Lambda. And what we're doing here is just uploading our code to Lambda so that way our intents our intent schema can access it. We're gonna create the Lambda function. We'll be fine with the blank function. We'll go ahead and click configure triggers. Our trigger is gonna be the Alexa skills kit. The name of the function, I'm gonna call it reindeer facts. We don't care about description. And this again is like the same thing that we had with our intent schema, but we are just going to upload our zip file because it's so much easier and yeah, cause I don't like dealing with text editors that are not sublime. Okay, we'll go ahead and upload this index.js. We'll have a choose an existing role, that's fine. We'll do basic execution. This is all fine, we'll click next. That's all good, I'm sure. And then we create the function. Congrats, it's been created, fantastic. We'll go ahead and click on it. And now our code is inside of this thing. And we can actually test our code right here by going to configure test event, and we are gonna just go into here. This is kind of like a beginning way, like does it you know, create a session here? And we'll save and test. And it looks like it's succeeding, so we don't have any major syntax errors here. And so that is good to go. Now, I have this special little thing up here. I'm blocking it out of this code because it's kind of a special thing you don't want other people to know about. And we're gonna copy this little ID, this ARN, to 
what we were using before. So going back to our reindeer fact skill, again, you went to developer.amazon.com. You go to your reindeer fact skill on this side of Amazon where your UI is. We're gonna go to configuration, and this was the endpoint that I was talking about earlier. And so we'll pick North America, there we go. And then we'll hit next, and so pasting that thing in there. Now our skill is enabled, and we can test it because we have both sides. And then we'll go ahead and try to enter an utterance. An utterance. So we'll say start reindeer facts, which is how we can evoke the skill. Here we have what our lambda request was, and we got, in fact, back welcome to reindeer facts. I can tell you all about the famous reindeer. So that seems to be working. Now let's ask for Dasher. Ask reindeer facts. Dasher loves to go fast and sewing. Do you want to hear more about more reindeer? We'll say yes. And then, great, which reindeer? You can find out about Dasher, Dancer, Prancer, Vixen, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so we can find out about all those. And so say we want to hear about Olive now. So we'll ask about Olive. Or we'll say, tell me about Olive. So another utterance. And so this is where we're putting what we would say to the user. And so Olive admits when she's wrong. So we could ask for help now. Um, and it'll say, that reindeer isn't any fa really famous. So that means we're gonna have to go ahead and edit our code a little bit. We'll write cancel and it says goodbye, thank you for using reindeer facts. So maybe it was the fact I was using an uppercase H and that was totally it. The fact I was using an uppercase H was the problem. And so here it says, I can tell you about all the facts of the famous reindeer, blah, 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 which reindeer are you interested in? And so that's great. And so now our skill is basically done one thing that we're probably gonna to wanna to do is in our interaction model, because we were having problems with the capital letters, we'll wanna convert these all to lowercase letters. Da -da -da -da. And then save it again, just to make sure you know all of this works. Um, so that's the first thing that we'll wanna do, and then we'll wanna copy these over to our uh, da -da, sample intents. So that way we have access to them. It's gonna create the model. And then another thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is if we go back to the skill information, we had this application ID, we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and copy this. Da -da -da -da, copy. And we're gonna to wanna to put this in our index.js. And so at the, up, the, the top here, we have this thing that's here. We're gonna uncomment this. And it's basically saying like only certain Alexa skills can access your Lambda function, which is the thing that holds all of this code. So we'll go ahead and put our skills ID inside of here. I'm going to be masking this out because again, it's a special skill ID you don't want other people to know about. And so once it's in there, you're gonna go ahead and zip up your JS again. And so whenever you wanna change the code of your skill, you go ahead, change it, compress it again, and then you'll put it back inside of your Lambda function. So we'll go ahead and upload some new code, which is gonna be our index.js. We'll go ahead, save and test, and we'll probably have an error which says invalid application ID. And that is because we need to go back up here and change our test event, because here it just kind of gives a random skill ID. So we'll wanna put in our own and then go ahead and save the event. So if we do save and test here, mine again is blocked out because it's special and then it has the execution is all good to go. Um, but say you had some kind of error and didn't know what to do with it, well you could go ahead and click logs and this is gonna take you to kind of where the console of Amazon, Echo, Lambda, all that good stuff is. And so you can go ahead and click on these logs and it will tell you the error messages. And so here when we had this error, It'll have this, but it might have more details about where the error is coming from in these logs. And also any print statements you make, they're gonna be in this thing. And so that is it for an Amazon Echo skill. You just created a skill on Amazon. If you're interested in submitting it, basically you'll fill out all of this stuff, you'll fill out the privacy thing, and then ultimately the submit for certification will be highlighted. You can go ahead and submit it. And I've submitted a skill before, and to me, it reminds me of the App Store for iOS. Though, if it's not good, they'll give you back a little message saying like, hey, it doesn't do what you said it would, or you have an error when this happens. That's what they're gonna send back. And it's usually like really helpful commentary. So yeah, I think it's a great thing if you're trying to learn JavaScript, which is what we wrote all of this code in. 
then I think it would be very helpful. And so I will see you next Friday with more stuff. And another thing we did not look into was APIs. Yes, you can use APIs inside of Amazon Echo Skills. And so in future tutorials, I'll go into how to do like an HTTP request or HTTPS request inside of the Amazon skill. And so I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.